Hello and welcome to Rich Rides. This week I'm going to show you how to fit a top box. The particular box I'm fitting is a Givy or Jivy top box. So here's the box that I'm going to be fitting. The things that came with this box were this mounting bracket. You need to make sure that you get this and this is the part that fits onto your bike and then the box clips into this. This is the monoblock system. Uh, the good thing about the monoblock system is that you can have multiple boxes and this same base. So if you've got more than one box, uh, and especially if you've got more than one bike and more than one box, it means it's interchangeable between bikes. So if you've got a small and a larger box, then that can work nicely because you can just swap them between. So tools wise, you don't need much at all. So the only tools I'll actually use here uh, an allen key, I think that was a 5mm allen key, uh, and a 10mm uh, spanner, so that's all you need. So it's something to be aware of, make sure that your uh, box when it comes, comes with these. Mine didn't, so I had to get these separately. Um, I typically use four of these, but I've only got three, but that's absolutely fine anyway. But I'll show you how you use these sort of W-shaped brackets for attaching it anyway. So this is the bike I'll be fitting it to. As you can see, it already has a rack. So you need to make sure that whatever bike you're fitting it to, it has some form of rack so that you can fit the base onto the rack. Um, this works out really well because it's the right sort of size and shape. And as you can see with this, what happens is these can come out difficult to do one-handed but they come out and you can position these metal brackets anywhere you want so what you do depending on your bike you find a place where you can fit these but then also fit these underneath so that it is on a brace so you can see underneath here that's part of the rack itself I can brace against that if I do it that way around so I can brace against this black bar underneath there underneath there and that one will get both of them so that means it's super super secure and then obviously underneath here you can see there we go you can see the bolt itself so you have a nut that goes on there and then this fits in there and gets bolted on. It'll make more sense when I actually do it. So as I just showed, there's only a very tiny gap here between the sort of bolts and the bikes and trying to get this in there would be really difficult. Um, so rather than struggle with it, the best way to do it is to actually, once you've found the right position for this, and again you want to make sure that's like dead central and really straight, don't come too far that way because the box will be sort of encroaching on your passenger or pillion seat and obviously don't hang too far off the back of the bike either. So once you've found the positions that that's going to work in, rather than struggle and try to fit these on in situ, because as you can see there's very <laughs> little room under here to sort of get in and put a bolt on. So rather than struggle, actually take this off um, and do this on the floor so I can't do this one-handed with the video camera but basically you just attach those very loosely so that you can still fit these on and because it will be braced that way you fit them on that way if that makes sense so that you can put it into position then rotate these and then tighten up these bolts um, from both sides so I'll do that in a second so that's those now put on Again, we can put that in the right position. If I spin these so I can actually do it to make sure. Again, difficult one-handed, but if I can do this one-handed, it's easy to do two-handed. And then you need to spin these 90 degrees, like so. Now we've got those brackets in there 
and attached. That's way easier. And the first time I tried to fit a top box, I really struggled because I didn't do it that way. I tried to do all that fiddly stuff from underneath while this was in situ. Like I say, there's no need to do it and you can obviously adjust um, the position slightly anyway, as you can sort of see. So the next thing to do is to tackle these one by one and tighten them up. So what I tend to do is get it into the position. I'll tighten one but not do it super tight so I can still move if need be. Then move to the next, move to the next, then do that final tweaking and tighten it. So to tighten these up, it's just simple. Um, so your Allen key on the top and then obviously your spanner underneath. So I'll do that off camera now. So as you can see, these are now tightened. If we look underneath, you can see how those bolts and brackets are. And you can see that the nuts and the bolts are tightened up with those brackets going across the bars that you can just see there. So now that's absolutely rock solid. As you can see, I could virtually tip the bike over with that. So the only thing to do now, they always come with these little plates that just cover that and stop rubbish getting in. So that's just a sort of push fit. And then a couple of very small screws going there just to keep that secure. Once that's done, you can put the box itself on. So that's that bit fitted, which looks a lot neater. So if you're not using the box and you just want to bungee strap something on, you've got a nice platform anyway. Then the final stage is putting the box on. So super simple. Look at the front there. There's a couple of holes and a couple of tabs on the box. They slot in there. Come on, the back here, you can see that that fits in there. You can just see it in this light. So once that's there, you feel it click. Now that's rock solid again. I can sort of move the whole bike. <laughs> so that's that fitted. And that's it. So that's how you fit a box. This is quite a big box, especially for this style of bike. Um, but like I say, the beauty of this sort of monoblock system is you can swap boxes between it. So I hope you found that useful. I was doing it myself, so I thought I would share the process and see you again next week.